Hello my amazing people, welcome back to my channel. Guys, Rufai don't give another word to word to. Another by Gozai, Totunubu and Ainek. Like these people, they are taking Nigerians for granted. If not for Rufai, I don't know who would have come out like in public, proudly say his mind without any fear. God bless this man, you know, because he is speaking the mind of many Nigerians. Yes. So, Tinubu is talking about uh, government national unity and the, the road where you take be like a president elect never clear and these people they are going ahead you know want to do whatever they want to do but nigeria they said no this cannot happen we all have to wait you know to go through this process so that the road will clear before we can know who to call president or not so you cannot just gaslight us yes so in this video like uh, rufa i really give it to them and uh, i just love it honestly and you guys really need to watch it watch it to the end so that you can get all the details thank you so much for watching guys i'm going to see you guys in my next one bye for now in all of this what we see is the fact that the zero-sum game is being played on the nigerian people when you look at it deeply it's about the politicians but not about the nigerian people what do the nigerian people need they need justice they need justice as regards an electoral process so when somebody, the president-elect, starts to talk about national competence and all of that, irrespective of the elections, the question we should ask him is, can he vouch for the process that brought him in? Because yesterday, one of his spokespersons, Mr. Dili Alaki, said this election has been the fairest and the fairest since 1999. I put it to Mr. Dili Alaki that what he said is untrue. It's a lie. These elections were not free, were not fair, were fraught with a lot of irregularities. And part of the game theory you're also talking about, Dr. Abati, is also media manipulation. That's another game. And that's why I say, see, in the coming days, there's going to be a fight for the truth, what dominates the truth. And in fighting for the truth, a lot of societal actors will deploy many tactics. Part of them is one tactic called gaslighting. What is gaslighting? They'll tell you something that happened never happened. In fact, they will controvert your evidence and say your evidence isn't true. When people are gaslighting you, after they've been able to controvert your evidence, they say, go and provide your evidence. And you're going to see a lot of that. So Nigeria people, please be watchful. A lot of those games are going to happen. There's going to be an all-out media war in the coming days. It's part of the game. But the sad reality of the game is that Nigerians are always being played in the zero-sum game. The zero-sum game in game theory is pretty much a game that affects and favors the winner and the other person doesn't get anything. Going back to his statement, it came out to say you build a government of competence, which is supposed to be the right refrain. But the question we should ask is, have we finished interrogating the process that led to his emergence in the first place before we can say we want to build a government of competence? Those are the questions we should ask ourselves. Yes, I have not ever subscribed to government of national units because we know the historical antecedents of that. Shagari and Anziki, we tried that in 79. We also I ended. It is always going to be skewed in favor of one party or the other. But what a lot of Nigerians are commenting about is the fact that the process and the guidelines, were they followed by INEC? If the answer has been answered as regards that, that no, then let's allow the court take its course. And let's also be patient and conciliatory in the statement we make. I've got nothing against Balatinubu talking about he wants a government of competence. That's what we want, and that's a welcome development. Because for too many times, we've had a lot of incompetent people serve our country. But also, we should not, because we are in the spirit of political gamemanship, negating the truth, because the truth is the fabric that builds a society. And the funny thing about the truth is that it is resolute, it is constant, it never leaves. No matter how much you try as much as possible to bring about alternative reality, like Kelly and Conway invented that word, Trump surrogate in America, the truth is constant. And what is the truth about these elections? That INEC didn't follow its own process, and that's why we call on the judiciary to stand tall and allow the truth prevail in this country. So that's the grand analysis of it. 
But he can say he wants a government of competence, he can do power voting, you, you know, he can flex muscle and all of that. He's president-elect, but he's too subject to the courts. Which Mr. Peter Obi said he has lost trust in Hynek. So there's going to be also contending strategies to balance themselves out. And the contending strategies will lead to this election we're about to have tomorrow. The question will be, how well will the part contending be able to game the system and INEC to their own benefit? Who will have the dominant strategy? Will the dominant strategy be bribing the resident electoral commissioners, ballot box snatching, using talks to disrupt? On the case of probability, I think that would largely be the case tomorrow. Will INEC stand up tall? Let's give them a, quite, a very, very judicious amount of probability. Because we want to have implicit confidence in them, despite the fact that we have every, res every resolve not to have confidence in them. Because it is not only this election INEC has failed. Save for 2015 elections, most elections have been dogged with these irregularities. In fact, an incumbent president that was elected in 2007 said the elections that brought me in were dogged with irregularities. But also, the other strategy that is not dominant will be the reaction. Will they be able to match the might of these people that want to rig elections? Will people be able to stand tall despite the fact that they will be harassed in polling units? And don't get deceived, they will harass in polling units. Will people be able to secure their votes despite the onslaught of talks? Will resident electoral commissioners be, and, and INEC officials be stopped when they're about to change results and all of that? And don't deceive yourself, they will try to do that tomorrow. So it will be contending strategies tomorrow. The question is, what strategy will dominate? Will it be people that are trying to sabotage the election? Will INEC aid them in doing this? or people that want free and fair election and the vote of the people to count. Historically, it has always been, the dominant strategy has always been those that want to rig, sabotage election. They always have their way in Nigeria. That's one leg I'll be putting forward historically. But as a Nigerian, as a patriot, I will leave a modicum of hope that INEC will surprise me tomorrow, which I very much doubt.